<clears throat> Welcome to The Adventures in Velagor! The following stories are collaborations inspired by the spirit of tabletop role-playing games such as Dungeons and Dragons. Our world, Valagorn, is of my own creation. My name is Blake Christ, and I will act as the dungeon narrator. Today's story pertains to the following heroes. Raphael Anastas Magoo, created and voiced by Greg Callahan. Vashti Whisperwind, created and voiced by Sarah Christ. And Pai Shou Wukong. Created and voiced by Kenneth Glynn. This episode is a continuation of a story starting with Episode 1 of the Fuku, Entering Civilization. Your experience with the adventures in Valagorn may be more enjoyable if you start there. Previously, on the adventures in Valagorn. You must be the saint of this wood. Oh, well, I suppose that must be me. But not any longer. Venara, it's what I am, or am of. I'm new to this uh, way of life. Welcome to Galeep. Why, Gunter Ficht, what brings you to town? My poor Ellie. She's been missing for two whole days now. Let's go looking for her! Many folk think Felteep Wood is full of haunts. We should go it ourselves, old one. You will slow down the search. You can't treat distraught people that way. You think I haven't lost? I left the Puske. My home, because the murderous orc Kogrok killed the man who raised me. What? What in the nines just happened? Was that a shmoogala? Do you think it may have taken the child? Mm, more likely, it led her away for a bit of fun. Forgive me, Paul. You saved our asses. I... I've never killed before. My goddess, Peul, teaches non-violence. Do you understand? About this guy. He killed your daddy, right? Kargrok. Maybe after this, I'll help you find him. The Story of the Fuku. Episode 2. The Old Vorkian Tomb. In the fell teep wood, our friends have taken a spot of rest after a vicious attack from the wildlife. Now they continue their search for the young Elet Ficht. We should press on. Oh, um, another round first. I think you've had enough for now, don't you, Wukong? How would you know? You were sleeping. No, I was meditating. I could still hear you sloshing back your gourd and asking questions while I prayed. Oh, damn, I was being rude, too. Mm, only a little. As the two chatter, Raphael searches for signs of the Shmugula that led them into the woods. The mossy creature has a scent of deep, wet earth and vegetation. Unfortunately for our skilled tracker, much of the woods share these smells. Then he finds a small patch of moss, unattached to stone or log. I found a trail. It leads away from the road, deeper into the corpse. 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 Corpse? Nice. The more I'm around you, Raph, the more I appreciate your... Uh... Attempted vocabulary. Uh, and I initiate you too, Kong. Thank you. Let's find this child, shall we? The trio has set down the path. Felteep Wood is like most of the Vurkoff clearance, flat, making traversing between its trees tolerable. The foliage is quite dense in places, however, and Raphael uses one of his short swords to bat away thorny branches as quietly as possible. Their quarry is small, quick, and a natural denizen of the woodland and, due to the group's respite, has gained a commanding lead. They hike for over an hour. The sun has retreated. Only slight moon and starlight trickle through the canopy, and the trio has forgotten the sound of their own voices, replacing them with the chirps of crickets and forest frogs. Oh, 
I have a flipping gods on board, guys. You startled me, Wukong. Sorry, but we gotta talk or something. This is too much. We are trying to keep our presence conspicuous. In. In conspicuous, sir. In, out, wherever we go, we should be quiet. Oh no, we can play a game. Hush. I spy something dark and... Wukong. Green. Can't you hear that? Hear what? Hush. Go away, yuck monster. Okay, I heard that. Quickly now. The creature may harm the girl. But that doesn't make much sense. Before Raphael can listen to what the wise Vashti may say, he rushes through the thicket to an opening where he can see the Shmugula and a little girl with a red hooded cloak. Both have their backs to the archer's position. The mossy thing reaches its long arm towards the child, and Vashti catches up to Raphael as he looses an no. arrow. The warning shot lands at the Shmugula's feet before its long gray fingers could touch the red fabric of the cloak. Gwa, gwa, Eli, gwa! The creature jumps about and quickly darts away into the trees. The child stands there with her back remaining towards the party. Do not be afraid, child. We are encroaching. Where did you guys go? It's all right, Elliot. We're here to take you home. Elliot? Yes, please take me home. Raphael and Vashti step closer. As they do, the little girl turns head over shoulder first with her body to follow. And on her face they see a wide, tooth-missing smile and empty white eyes peeled open to their extreme. Take me home, Mommy, Daddy. Yeah, um, I am not your daddy. Hey, guys, oh my dear God! What's wrong with her? Ellet, your daddy is Gunter Ficht. Don't you remember? Oh, yeah. Take me home to Daddy, please. I don't think this is the little girl we were looking for. The childlike entity's smile shifts to a scowl. Yes, yes I am. I'm Ellie Fix, like you said. Take me home to Gunner. I'll be a good, good girl, I promise. I've got a horrible feeling about this. I'm sorry, little one, but I think you are not Ellie at all. Sadly, I think you are lying to us. I am not a lie. A flame, blue and without heat, seems to rise from the hooded child. Yellow pigtails start to shake under red fabric and the girl's small body lifts from the ground. You take that back. You take it back right now. I'm not a liar. I'm Ellet Fix. Say it. Say it. Say it. Fuck, oh, Vashti, what are you angering spirits like that for? You say I'm Ellet Fix right now, covered lady. I will not, because you're not Ellet. M- maybe if you tell us your real name, then maybe we can help you. No! I want to be Ellet. She's nice and pretty and happy. You will tell them I'm Ellet. Do it or I'll have to hurt you. I'm sorry. We can't do that. <clears throat> the spirit child rises higher into the air, and the blue flame rages, and an arrow shoots just between the girl's neck and red hood, leaving a hole as it flies off. Raphael, don't! For a sliver of a second, the entity's eyes flash blue, and a look of concern comes over its face but both are quickly washed over by the familiar pale visage. A smile forms. Oh no, you don't want to hurt Ellet, do you? Poor little girlie. <laughs> As she laughs, the spirit flies in a spiral around her, reaching higher into the canopy. While she floats by, the ground shakes at the party's feet, and long-forgotten bones reveal themselves as they neatly stack back into their old familiar configurations. Now three fleshless figures with sword and shield, spear and bow, march toward our heroes. Fuck this noise. The Venara rushes in and swings the cord end of his staff, which is caught by the creature's shield. Wukong uses his momentum to twist into a spin ah! that sends the skeleton's jaw into the woods. In retaliation, a sword comes down towards Wukong, but our skilled martial artist bats it away with his staff. You don't need to do this, child. As the skeleton with the bow sends an arrow towards Vashti, Raphael shoots it square in its empty eye socket. Its head rolls to the ground and its bones crumble, but its arrow still finds its mark in Vashti's arm. The priestess pulls the arrow from her bicep and a white sack soaks her sleeve. We do not want to hurt you, little one. 
speak for yourself. I don't think she will respond to reasoning, Vashti. The third skeleton lunges forward, loosing its spear, which lands in the front of Raphael's hip. The archer steps backwards and slides down a trunk to sit amongst the roots of a tree. The skeleton then swoops up the dropped bowl of its crumbled compatriot. Meanwhile, Wukong cracks his staff into his combatant's shoulder hard enough for it to drop the entirety of its arm. Then another kick, this time into the shield, forcing the skeleton to stumble back against a tree trunk, bursting its ribcage and vertebrae into a dispersed pile. Wukong then rolls and springs toward the remaining foe. Raphael! Hey, will help him. As Raphael rings in agony, suddenly his pain subsides, but yet there is a spear in his hip. He reaches for the weapon's shaft just as an arrow meant for his chest squarely sinks into its wood. Vibrations quake down the spear into Raphael's hip, and there is the pain again. After the arrow is fired, Wukong fires a projectile of his own. His dart glances off the side of the assailant's skull, an eyeless hole snap the stare at him. Wukong jumps into a leaping double kick. What else you got? Wow, your friends are strong. Fine covered lady, I'll tell you my name. I'm Tanya Tisht, but I still don't think you can help me, so I'm keeping Ellet. Tanya, that's a lovely name. Now, I'm sure there is some way that Okay, we... I'm done playing with you. Bye! With that, the spear child rockets off into the woods. Tanya, no, please, come back. Vashti starts after her, but a staff with a dangling gourd stops the priestess. Check on Raph. I'll follow her. Okay, I will. Wukong dashes the way that Tanya flew off and up a tree. Oh. Raphael, that looks so painful. That's so, I think, due to your help. But yeah, it hurts. All right. Are you ready? No, but, but let's get it over with. In one quick yank, Vashti pulls the spear from Raphael's hip. Oh, the mahogany! Uh, no, this is a spruce. I meant the pain. Oh, yes, I imagine. Vashti then closes her eyes and puts her hand on her friend's knee. Oh, thank God. Indeed, but I hope we haven't much more injury this night. I'm uncertain if we can expect much more of Paul's blessing. Or at the very least, I tire from being her conduit. I never knew one's relationship with a gaiety could lead to such power. I'm thankful with what you have been able to share. It's fairly new to me as well. Can you walk? Yes. I think I could run miles thanks to you. Well, you are welcome, but you should thank Peul. Let's catch up to Wukong. Wukong bounds from tree to tree, keeping an eye on Tanya as she flies while remaining unseen himself. They travel this way for a quarter of a mile, and Tanya stops next to a rock structure covered in plant life just as Wukong is about to jump to his next tree. He manages to catch a branch behind him with his Venaran tail pulling himself back from his leap with only the slight sound of an- Oh, shit! Tanya looks around to see if she was followed. Fuck, 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 The little spirit girl lands, takes one last look about, and enters a hidden entrance in the pile of rocks. Dark, damp places. Yeah, well. Well, can't go it alone, can we? Wukong settles where a bough meets the trunk of his tree. All there is to do is wait. Yeah. What a beautiful thing. I followed his trail to about here. And short-lived. Where has that monkey gone? Wow! The Venara hangs down from a branch, using one arm and his tail to look Raphael right in his face. Dude, don't be racist. Racist? How? What did I do? Come on, man, monkey. I don't go around calling you a hairless ape. I have plenty of hair. So you don't mind being called an ape? Hmm. I think I see a point. My apologies. Meh. No worries. Wukong lands in front of them and begins leading the way to the rock pile. Since we're on the subject of race, what manner of creature might you be, Vashti? Raph? That is also racist. What? Really? I'm only curious. She obviously keeps herself covered for a reason, and maybe that's to avoid questions or persecution. I see. Thank you, Wukong, but I can speak for myself. Besides, she might be some sort of hideous goblin creature under there, 
I mean, do you really want to know? Wukong! That was way more racist than anything Raphael had said. Oh, come on, nobody likes goblins, Vashti. <sighs> you both are the worst. I am still unsure of what I've done. Vashti arrives at the rock structure, and she notices eroded words etched into a crumbling entryway. Hmm. This isn't a natural structure. Oh, uh, yeah. What's her name? Uh, the, the, the... Tonya! She went in there. There are some words. Can either of you make them out? They seem familiar, yet... Raphael looks closely. It is dark, but the letters do look similar to the script of Trorn, the common language of the continent. The words, however, are unfamiliar to the man who struggles with words in general. He does make out one word clearly, however. York. Does that mean anything? I think this area is known as Land Bjorkop. Uh-uh, It's the little shit again! Behind you! <laughs> Raphael, quick yet stumbling, draws his sword. Gwa, gwa, gwa. In the Shmugula's long, gray, outreaching arms, it holds three arrows, two of which are badly damaged. Gwa? Um... Thank you. Raphael reaches for the arrows, and instinctively the mossy thing recoils a bit, but then freely relinquishes the ammunition. As I tried to tell you, Shmugula are sometimes mischievous, but mostly kind. Gulala, Sla Gramma, Blagra, Muga Grub, Gramma, Gabagula, Smugula, just a minute, What manner of jibber jab is that? It's Shmug, Raphael. His native tongue. Well, I don't understand a cram thing he is saying. Let me try. Gromikulba Shmugi Bogi. You can't just say whatever you like, Wukong. What if you insult the poor creature? Sorry. I thought it was mostly an intention kind of thing. Do you, do you speak this Shmoog, Vashti? No, but let me try something. The priestess kneels to the Shmoogla's level and begins to speak in a completely different language than Shmoog or the common Trorn. The words are fluid and gliding like Elvish, but the listener might glean that these words are much older. To the surprise of the human in the Venara, the Monsi monster converses back with Vashti in the same eloquent language, if not less gracefully. Though they cannot understand it, this is how the conversation progresses. My name is Vashti Whisperwind of the Wunderveld, what I assume is your home plane as well. What brings you to this realm? I, Gula, Gula no know how, why here? But worry about friend Ellie. Ellet Ficht. We search for her, and yes, we worry about her as well. Ellie meet Tanya. Gula try tell Ellie that he's scared of Tanya. But Ellie only see good and follow Tanya in wood. Gula scare and not stop her. Gula sorry for this. You sound like a good friend, Gula. Try to fix, bring... Strong power people, weapon, to save Ellie. You do? Yes, Gula. We will do our best. Gwa! La gra wa! Gula jumps around, using his long arms to spring off the ground. Thank you, Whisperwind. Thank you, friend. We will take it from here. Gula then wraps his long fingers around Vashi's shoulder for a short moment. The Shmugula leaps into its freshly made portal, and about twenty feet away from the trio they see a moss-cowled head peek out from the darkness of the tree line, and a long gray hand waving before Gula turns around and shimmies into the wood. Okay. Okay. What'd it say? His name is Gula, and he confirmed my suspicion. We are following Elid, but she is under the influence of this Tanya. We plan to enter, yes? I think if we wish to know what has happened, we must. Well, if you really want to. They enter, despite any hesitation for the sake of the forward momentum of the plot. <laughs> Inside the entrance of the structure, our trio is immediately met by rounded stone steps that lead them down to a flat earthen floor. In the middle of this carved rectangular room is a large brass brazier. Uh, there is. Yes. And there appears to be an oil of a sort within. Right. Can humans not see in the dark? 
You can. <laughs> God, what a horrible disadvantage. That is unfortunate. Well, usually I would light a torch before entering such a place, but I felt rushed along for some reason. Go, oh, crab. Allow me. Dear gods, my eyes. As Raphael recovers from a retinal burn, the other two, expecting the bright brazier, see the walls alight. Wow. Upon the walls is one of the most detailed mosaics either has ever seen, depicting two massive armies, one human, one orc. Look there, that word again. Where the walls that share the mosaic meet, Bjork is built into the left of the corner, and a word that might be an archaic relation to glory connects with it on the right. As the archer's eyes come to, he sees a particularly monstrous depiction of an orc pinning down a dying human under a spear. Cogrock. What's that, Raph? Uh, let's move along. All right? Yeah, sure, bud. They go deeper into the room and to the left of the mural. There they find a tunnel, and further left, a little nook. Within this little cove sits a long dead body at a dilapidated desk. Oh my. He's been here quite some time. Look at these robes. They appear to have been very beautiful once upon a time. Eh. You think there may have been some sort of priest? Mm, possibly. An old book. Maybe a gurnal. May I? Yeah. What's it say? This is the last entry. It isn't quite legible, but this is what I can make out. I am all that's left. I wonder how long it will take for the illness to consume me, and I wonder if anyone will remember the Kingdom of York. Illness? Should we, um, be touching this stuff? I think any disease would be long dead by now. Can we be certain? Perhaps Peul can guide us in this. The priestess prays to her goddess, and in return she receives a feeling that she was correct. We are safe here. From this age-old illness, at any rate. Does the journal say anything more? Yes. It says, The healthy have left the kingdom, while the infected stayed to rot away. I have come to this old tomb of memoriam to live out my last days. No food, no water. I hope I need not suffer long. A small break and some words I don't understand, but he continues... It appears I will have company. Will I parlay with them till eternity? I hope I will not share that fate with them. May the sun bless me. Mallet Wata, priest of Chardian. So, um, company, huh? I don't much like the sound of it either. I suppose we might find out what he meant. They continue on, and Raphael takes a step down the tunnel. When Wukong's staff stops Whoa, 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 see, see, those holes in the walls? I think this way is trapped. Oh, yes. Well done, Wukong. I don't see any triggers, though. We should find another way if it isn't safe. Ah, green, then. I agree, sure. They return to the main room where the brazier still burns, and past it they come upon another path but it is blocked by a standing stone slab. Eh. How did this rope get under this wall? Oh, it's a door, silly. Silly? Fuck you, Raph. Yes. Look up there. You see that, uh, roundish thingy? That's a pulley. I think Wukong knows what a pulley is. Of course I do. I'm no idiot, Raph. But say that I was. Uh, What's it do? This rope, I think, once ran through that pulley, which rules, allowing you to pull it, you see, (coughs) by turning that broken wheel against the wall over there. Very well consigned, I'd say. It seems quite useless now, however. Oh, no, no. I think I can fix it. I'm not sure how we will get up there, though. Taking no time to consider, Wukong starts jumping back and forth against the wall of the entryway until he is high in the corner. His feet widespread and one hand pushing hard against a wall, he reaches out for the pulley. Okay? What now? Well, I think you should have taken a rope with you. 
Toss it out. Wukong, this seems dangerous. No, no, I got this. Toss me the rope. All right. As the tail of the rope from Raphael's pack reaches its apex, two feet from the Venar's chest, Wukong reaches out with both hands. Oops. Okay, we'll do it your way. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah. I don't need that part of my chin anyway. Raphael takes his rope and ties it to the remnants of the Ancient One under the slab. He hands it to Wukong. The Venara again climbs the wall. With a deft, dart-like throw, Wukong sends the rope through the pool. And now? We have two opinions. First, we could try to pull the rope ourselves, which may or may not work. Second, I could try to fix that wheel, which may take some time. I am not the strongest, nor do I believe one of us could hold this boulder while the rest go under it. So I think the second option is truly our only choice, in my opinion. Wukong, do you see another rope dangling up there? Yeah. Okay. We need you to take our new rope and tie it to the dangler. Fuck. Can you reach it, Wukong? Uh, sure. Why not? Swing me the rope. Okay. With rope in hand, Wukong wall dashes till he is near parallel with the other line. He then pushes off the wall as hard as he can into a leaping dive, but he overshoots his mark and begins to fall. Thankfully, his long tail wraps around his target. Now he sways back and forth, catching his breath. Oh, God. Ah. I think I'm kind of out of shape. Well, you do drink quite a lot. Now is not the time, Raph. Wukong then grabs the rope with his feet, which are much stronger than his talented tail, and he crunches up to tie the two ropes together. That knot won't hold. Raph? It does have to lift a giant stone. Fine. There. How's that? Yeah, that's better. All right. It coming! Raphael pulls a bundle wrapped in deer skin from his pack and unrolls it on the floor to reveal several tools for carving and cutting wood. And now I fix the wheel. This will take me an hour or two. Maybe three, depending on the damage. What? Raphael, we must get to Elit. I will work as quick as I can. The sooner I start, the sooner I complete it. Yeah, no, fine. I could use a break after that exertion, anywho. After an hour and a half of work, the brazier's light grows dim, but Raphael manages to replace the peg that once held the turning wheel to the wall. With a hard push, he mounts the wheel. Are we ready? Yeah. Let's go to bed. He means to continue on. Okay, fine. All three, with varying degrees of effort, turn the wheel, and to some of their surprise, the stone actually rises. If we let go... It should hold itself. One, two, three. They let go, and yes, the giant rock remains suspended. Well done, Raphael. Well, thank you. Now hurry through. God's no if it'll hold. They step through the passage and down some solid stairs untouched by time. With the remaining light from the next room, they see that the walls of this new chamber are lined with five stone sarcophagi. As the stone curtain drops behind them, darkness engulfs our heroes. I forgot the torch again. Suddenly a candle from a wall sconce lights itself. Then one by one all the candles in the room begin to burn. And floating in front of the tombs are six spectral beings staring back at the trio. Look, it's all of hopes! Save us, Paul. What will happen to our friends now? Will they ever recover the young Elephant? Will they survive? Find out next time on The Adventures in Valagon! Fuck this, fuck this. Will Cogs out? Bye!
This episode of The Adventures in Valagorn would not have been possible without the vocal talents of our cast. Of course, we have our heroes. Raphael and Astus Magoo, created and voiced by Greg Callahan. Vashti Whisperwind, created and voiced by Sarah Christ. Pai Show Wukong, created and voiced by Kenneth Glenn. The remainder of our cast in order of appearance is as follows. Gula the Shmugula, voiced by Blake Christ. Tanya Tisht, voiced by Sarah Daly. And I am Blake Christ, your dungeon narrator. Thank you all for listening. Here is a special thanks to the community of freesound.org for our sound effects needs. The Adventures in Valagorn is a proud production of Fiction Works 19. We plan to return to you with more adventure on the 19th of each month. In the meantime, like, follow, share, subscribe, comment, review, and check up on us through Facebook or the Fiction Works 19 Instagram page.